If you're thinking of planting a new bed of daylilies, you've got a lot of options. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the different things you might want to think about as you're planting a new bed of daylilies, some of the ideas for how you might want to do that. And in particular, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to call a designed landscaping bed or landscaping planning, uh, where you kind of take into account you know, the different heights and the different seasons and, of course, the colors. And I'm going to talk about all this while I actually plant a bed of daylilies. So we'll talk about you know, where you might want to put your bed, uh, how to prepare the soil, uh, how to plant a daylily, fertilizer, all the care type information. So stay tuned. So let's talk about some different kinds of plantings you might consider doing. Uh, the first one I'm going to call a collector's bed. Uh, and one of the great things about daylilies you may know is that they just come in such a wide range of, of varieties available. There have been literally thousands of daylily varieties introduced. Uh, we typically offer more than 200 on our website. So lots of folks just like to buy one of a whole bunch of different kinds and plant them in a bed where they can just look at all of them, uh, you know, in a mix. And that's awesome. That's probably one of the most popular things that people do with, with daylilies. And it's uh, fun. We have a lot of uh, beds at our display garden, which is where we are, that are planted just like that. Uh, and it's kind of fun because you can go out and we don't normally like plan out how we're going to lay those out. We just kind of do it randomly uh, just because it's kind of interesting to see how it turns out. You know, this one next to this one, how they look together. You know, and I like to mix up the different bloom shapes. Uh, you got the long spider types with the long thin petals and the doubles, the double blooms, and of course your standard round blooms. And you know, when you mix them together, they stand out more so because they're not they're, because they're different from each other. So the collector's bed is a really popular one for a lot of folks. Uh, and then uh, the mass planting, like you might see in maybe a more commercial landscape, you know, outside a outside a bank or a uh, office building, or perhaps in the uh, medians and highways. I know North Carolina has done a lot of plantings of daylilies. They've got literally tens of thousands down there, medians. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go through there in the summer, it's beautiful. Uh, and that would typically be, you know, maybe just one or two varieties, but big blocks of the same thing. Uh, and that's another good opportunity, you know, for that, for that purpose. And then what I'm going to talk about today is what I'm going to call a designed landscape planting, where you're going to plant uh, in your landscape and you kind of think about it, uh, maybe to plant some tall things in the back, short in the front, maybe to try and coordinate so you get a longer bloom season with some earliers and earlies and lates and maybe some rebloomers. Uh, and you're probably not going to plant maybe just one of each kind. You're probably going to plant a few of each kind because, you know, oftentimes in the landscape, I think at least that if you plant, you know, three of a kind or, or more, it just gives more of a pop. It's kind of like a bunch of the same thing, just gives more of a, a, a pop of color in the landscape like that. So that's what I'm going to talk about today in this video is the designed landscape planning. So the bed I'm going to be planting in is at our display garden. Uh, and um, you see it here behind me. You know, one of the nice things about um, having a nursery is I own a, a six foot tiller. So it took me longer to get the tractor than it did to till this up. But uh, I worked up the soil, which is what you'll want to do before you plant your daylily bed. And talk about where to put your daylilies. Daylilies like full sun. That's going to be their happiest place. Uh, but as long as you get half a day of sun, six hours or so, they should be fine. Yeah, but uh, they definitely are a sun plant, not a shade. Uh, as far as what kind of soil, they're not not really particular. Uh, we have pretty good soil here in Tennessee, so typically I just use what we've got. Uh, but if you've got you know really heavy clay or a real sandy soil, you might want to mix in some organic material. But they're not real picky. They can they can do well in a, a range of soil types. So when I was deciding what varieties I wanted to use for this bed, I thought about three different things. I thought about the color, and I thought about the height, and I thought about their bloom season. Now, as far as colors go, there are lots of different combinations that are going to look good. Uh, that's up to you, which, which thing you like. Uh, I like the oranges and the bright golds, so that's what I picked for this. I picked some of my favorite oranges and yellows and golds. Um, but like I say, there are all sorts of things that are going to look good. You might like the uh, lavender pinks, or you might like uh, purples and whites, you know, it's reds and yellows. There are lots of good choices. We've actually done some newsletters on possible color combinations, so you might want to check those out. There's a link in the uh, comments below about that. Uh, and then, um, as far as the heights go, you know, daylilies range from uh, you know, 12 inches, 15, 18 inches, all the way up to you know, our tallest one is uh, five foot tall or, or taller. So you've got a lot of options in there. There are a lot, of course, in the middle between 24 and 36 inches where most of them are going to lie. But I took into that account, picked some tall ones for the back and some short ones for the front. Uh, and then the seasons, uh, here in East Tennessee, our earliest bloomers are going to start uh, in mid to late May. And then the ones that are listed as late season for us won't start until the end of June or even early July. So if I mix some of our earliest bloomers and some of our late bloomers, 
you're going to have some that are kind of in their peak bloom all the way through, you know, definitely the whole month of June and on to the first part of July. And then rebloom is a nice trait, which some daylilies have, and they will bloom and then bloom again. Uh, it's got its limitations. You know, you're never going to get as much bloom on the rebloom as you had on the first time. And some colors are a lot more rebloomers available in golds and yellows, for instance. But if you can get it, it's a nice trait. So I picked uh, one variety in particular that's a really good rebloomer. Uh, to try and extend maybe even past uh, summer, maybe get some bloom on into the fall. Now, just a reminder in your area, you know, if you're further south than us down in Florida, your bloom is probably going to start maybe late April. Uh, and then further north of us, your bloom may not start until late June. Uh, so it's, it's all relative, you know, what the seasons mean. Uh, but all the dailies that we offer, you can, you can look on the product pages and it shows early, mid, late, etc. And rebloom if it's, if it's a rebloom. So I picked four varieties to use in this bed. Uh, the first one I picked was a variety called Stella de Oro, and this is probably, uh, probably no, undoubtedly, the most widely planted daylily that, uh, that there's been. Uh, and the reason it is so widely planted in a lot of commercial landscapes and mass plantings in particular is because it's a really good rebloomer. It's got nice uh, gold, bright gold blooms, relatively small, about two inch blooms, uh, and it's about 18 to 24 inches tall. And so that's why I picked it, and it's an extra early season bloomer. So it's gonna be one of the earliest ones to bloom. So I picked it for the front of the bed. It's gonna bloom early in the season. It's gonna be a nice bright gold color, and then it should bloom later on, uh, maybe two or three times through the, through the later on in the summer and into the fall. So that was the first one I picked, Stella Dior. Okay, the second variety I picked was Heavenly Dragonfire, which is a nice, big, uh, bright orange bloom, uh, one of my favorites, and it's really tall. Uh, it's uh, listed at 45 inches tall, so that's one of the taller ones that we grow. So obviously I picked this one to go with the back of the uh, planting. Uh, and it's a mid-season bloomer, so probably Stella's going to be sort of wrapping up by the time this one starts. So uh, this is Heavenly Dragonfire. And the last two varieties I picked are Buttered Popcorn and Techni Peace. Uh, buttered Popcorn has got a, a great color. It's kind of well-named, nice bright gold uh, in its uh, All-American selection. has lots of blooms. Uh, and it's uh, listed as mid to late, so it's going to be mid-season. It's going to definitely overlap with the Heavenly Dragonfire. Uh, and like I said, it has a lot of blooms, so it's going to bloom for a long bloom period. And can rebloom as well. Uh, and then the last one I picked is a variety called Techni Peace, which I just love this color. It's listed as a polychrome, which is a word that I really only find in the daylily world. But it's yellow, it's got some blends of maybe even pink and peach in it. Uh, I really like it. And it's a late season bloomer, so this one's probably not going to start you know, for us until uh, late in June and go on, extend our season for a few more weeks perhaps past when the others are starting to wrap up. Uh, both of these are sort of mid-height. I think this one's 28 and this one's 32 or vice versa. Uh, so they're going to be kind of in the middle. So we've got the Heavenly Dragonfire in the back and these two I'm going to put on the sides and the Stella in the front. So let's talk about uh, how to space the daylilies in your new bed. So daylily plants come in different sizes. Uh, oftentimes, daylilies with smaller blooms have smaller plants, uh, such as the Stella Dioro. You can see this is a plant of, of Stella Dioro. Well, it's actually two right there, but so that's how small that is. That's called a fan. So you can see how small that is. Uh, as opposed to Heavenly Dragonfire, you can see this is one plant of that. So this is obviously a lot bigger plant uh, than the Stella is. And so this one is just going to grow up into a smaller stature clump. And so you're probably going to want to plant those with smaller blooms like the Stella, a little closer together. And then you plant the ones with the larger blooms like the Heavenly Dragonfire. So um, you see I've got them laid out here. I put the Stellas in the front, right? There's one, two, three, four, five of those, okay? Uh, and they're a little closer together than the other ones with larger blooms. I think they're about, um, that's a little less than 18 inches. Uh, and then the ones with the larger blooms are more like uh, two feet almost apart. Um, and um, I'll just, you know, remind you of something I said a little bit ago, but I put the Stellas in the front because they're short, right? And these are the tallest ones, the three Heavenly Dragonfires. There's the three Buttered Popcorns, which are 28, 32 inches tall. And on the other side are the three Techni Peace. And so I've planted them so that you get like a block of color from each of the different varieties. Um, so I mentioned also that this is pretty much the size of plant that we sell. Okay, so if you buy from us, this is what you're going to get. It'll have a tag on it uh, that'll all be tagged with the information so you know what the varieties are. Uh, and it'll be washed. These aren't. I just did these for us here. Um, 
And, and if you're dividing your own daylilies, you're probably going to want to leave it something about this size. Uh, if you divide it down smaller than this, it's, it's probably not going to, it's going to take a lot longer for it to get established in your landscape. So a nice big chunk like this is a good way to, to go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is how to plant your daylily. Okay, and uh, one thing I did want to mention that I forgot to say about the spacing part is when you plant these, they may look a little far apart when you first plant them. Uh, but once they grow foliage and certainly over uh, the next few years, you'll be glad you put them, you know, a little further apart. Uh, so, okay, back to planting. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a hole, right? And daylilies are relatively shallow rooted, so this doesn't have to be particularly deep. All right, and you can see on this plant here, well, this one's still got dirt on it, so you can tell exactly where the soil was. But uh, you see the white between the green and the roots? This is about soil level, so they're not very deep, right? So I'm going to sit that in there about like that, and that's as deep as it's going to need to be, right? So I'm just going to push this dirt back around it. Whoops. I forgot one thing I was going to do before I did that. As we sell this product, it is the uh, grow tabs, and they are designed to help uh, when you're transplanting daylilies. So I'm going to put one of these in the bottom of each hole. So let me just uh, open that up. See, so just a whoop, little tab there. So I'm just going to drop that down in the bottom. I'm going to put the plant over top of it. I'm going to push the dirt around it. All right, you can see it's about that level where it was. All right, now I'm just going to mash the dirt down pretty good around there. All right. There you go, that's pretty much all you got to do as far as planting a daylily. So we've got our daylilies planted, all right? And the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna add some fertilizer. Okay, so we sell a day, uh, fertilizer that we had especially made for daylilies. Uh, and you don't use a lot of this. This is, uh, you'll just use about uh, two tablespoons, about an ounce on each daylily. So uh, I'll open this up here. All right, I don't have my tablespoons with me, so. I'm just going to show you just a little bit around the plant. All right, just like that. Okay, there you go. So I'm just going to add a little bit like that. You know, this is, uh, you know, concentrated fertilizer, so this is all you're going to need. Right? And this bag here is enough to do 75 to 100 day lilies. So it'll go away. So I'm going to finish uh, putting fertilizer on all of these. Okay? Uh, and then after that, I'm going to come back and add some mulch over the top, right? Uh, I'm gonna use wood chips because that's what we have handily available, but uh, they're not picky. Whatever mulch you've got should be fine. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in and water them in really well. And when I say water them in well, I'm gonna try and give them at least an inch of water a week, at least for the first few weeks. Uh, that's best for them all through the season uh, for best performance, but certainly the first few weeks after you plant, uh, if you can water them a couple times, a really good soaking, two or three times a week, that's probably enough. Uh, but that's what I'm gonna do for these newly planted daylilies. As long as I'm missing fertilizer, I would just say, uh, the best times to fertilize are when you plant, uh, and then spring is a great time, and then sometimes folks will also uh, fertilize again in the fall. That's uh, optional, uh, but you can do that if you like. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we've grown daylilies for over 40 years, so we love to talk about all things daylilies. If you have any questions about this video or anything else daylily related, you can put it in the comments below or all of our contact information is on our website. Um, I know in this video I mentioned re bloomers. That's a popular topic. You might want to check out this video about re bloomers. But uh, thanks for watching.